Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 184. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, the Great Code Holio has dug up DOS games backslash arcade backslash corncob2. I think I know what this is going to be. Um, oh, that's interesting. We've got a numbered executable that has all the data in it, an install executable, which is very small, and a readme. Okay. Uh, oh, I meant to do it. Edit. Edit readme. This release of Corncop 3D consists of three files, the readme, the installer, and a self-extracting compressed archive of all the files in the Corncop game. Okay, so it does look like we're going to have to run the installer. Um, to install the corn cob on your heart. <laughs> okay, so I happen to know that corn cob 3D is a sort of flight sim, but I've never actually played it before, and I, rem I think I remember having trouble getting this working from this CD, but maybe we'll have better luck now that I'm actually using a DOS emulator. So, do not try to install the same directory as the previous version, or as a previous version. Interesting. So just run the installer, then play the game. Okay. Oh, well, let's go try to get this working. So install. Please enter the full path name for the new corn cob directory. So full path name means we have to actually type in the whole thing. Um, yeah. Just do it like that. Space required, please confirm installation. Okay, there it goes. Probably speed this up. Okay, so type corn cob to run. Let's see if this actually works. Um, it's kind of working. It's definitely going way too fast. Okay, it's still a bit flickery with the lower cycles counts but it does seem to be working better. So, let's see here. Following information will only only appear this first time to run Cord Cop 3D. View it again later by choosing the view documentation. Okay, so, it's an easy game to use. When you exit this introduction, you'll be viewing the main menu. In the main menu, you can select various submenus in order to take advantage of the many features. If you just want to get in the cockpit and fly type, then type CR in the main menu. <laughs> okay, um, first of all, telling people to type CR is generally not a good idea because the average person doesn't know that that stands for carriage return, and that carriage return is the enter key. <laughs> so, that's not a, this, I think we've, we're a little off track here. If, if the guy, whoever made this is saying that Corncob 3D is an easy game to use, and yet they're using actual, like, computer lingo to describe things, and I have to wonder what their definition of easy is. Well, apparently we've got a whole bunch of, um, settings here. Well, here's the documentation. I'm not sure how to, um, how to actually choose anything in this list here, because it seems to bottom out, at, like, right down here. But how do I choose, like, do I actually type in, like, oh, I do actually type in the full number. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so, yeah, apparently Corn Cop 3D is written by Kevin Stokes from Pie in the Sky Software. Yeah, and there's a lot of controls to this game. <laughs> Including the ability to detonate planted assassin bombs. Like stay not, yeah, so... Corn Cop 3D is not only a flight sim, but it also has the ability to walk around the ground, too. This is actually a pretty involved game, if I'm remembering. But... So, it might be a little difficult to actually show show this with like without like doing a whole bunch of like research into how to control this properly and everything. And the funny thing about this is that the registration fee is only $10 here, but looking through this here, it seems like if you want to get a whole bunch of extra features, like ad-lib sound and the ability to make your own missions and everything, it's $15. Which almost seems like no one would ever spend the $10 if they really wanted this because of the fact there's so many more features for the extra $5. 
But in any case, um, well, let's go do a training mission. Um, okay, so current choices give me an invulnerable plane with five missile sites of random spread of strength, six AAA sites. Huh. Well, I guess fly mission. And let's see where we go. Please wait a moment. Yep, there we go. We are in our plane. So I do actually have this working. <laughs> I remember having a lot of difficulty trying to get this working back on actual hardware. But then considering the fact the actual hardware I was trying to run this on was like <laughs> a lot faster than I've got the cycle set. That's probably part of the problem there. Uh, so to begin flight, hold down the plus key to advance the throttle to maximum. I can do that. That was a lot of flight controls. Because, <laughs> yeah, this is like a proper flight sim in some ways, but at the same time, it's also like a game where you're trying to actually, you know, defeat some enemies and stuff. Okay, throttle to maximum. Okay, so C, B is our bombs, C is our missiles, and then we also have a map we can access with the M key, which doesn't help. Oh, wow, there's actually some stuff going on over there. I'm not hearing any sound effects. I guess when they say ad-lib sound for the full game, it, they mean, like, any sound at all. Do I have to bomb that? A lot of stuff going on right now. <laughs> oh, jeez. I have to wonder if that's actually rendering properly. So did I drop a bomb or something? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Looking at it on the rear view there, it almost looks like some kind of box, like a force field maybe. Some interesting effects going on for sure. Especially given the fact that it's making me wonder if the simulation's even working properly. Oh wow. Um, it's actually tracking G-forces. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Uh, let's, there's this thing in the sky here. Maybe if I try firing a missile at it. Uh, does that even work? Um, there's a, well, it exploded immediately. There's another missile. Think I hit it? It's hard to tell. <laughs> yeah, to say things are a little hectic at the moment would be an understatement. Also, I can't really tell if I'm moving, because you see those dots on the ground. Like, usually in a flight sim type game like this, where the graphics are very basic, usually an attempt is made to... Oh wow, I think there's like a missile on my tail. Usually an attempt is made to try and convey a sense of movement with like dots on the ground and everything, but the dots on the ground here don't seem to do that. They just sort of seem to be out there. Okay, let's try again to take out this thing in the sky. Just gotta get the cursor over it. Yeah, I can't really tell if I'm doing much to it. Well, it seemed a little wobbly there. So yeah, one of these days I might review this game properly. But as it, sta as it stands, it's, it's definitely an interesting game. Because you didn't see a lot of shareware flight sims, just from nature of the fact that a flight sim usually requires quite a good level of knowledge in terms of just making the simulation model in the first place. But this one actually combines it with, well, shooting aliens from the looks of it. But yeah, one of these days I might cover this on Ancient DOS games. Um, for the interim, though, I do recall that um, Clint of Lazy Game Reviews actually did cover this game at one point. And he went into it a lot more depth than <laughs> I'd probably be able Well, yeah, probably, because he's probably got more experience with it than I do, whereas this is my very first time playing this, so... <laughs> But yeah, so that's an option too if you want to check more out about this game. But as for me right now, I am I just <laughs> a bit overwhelmed by everything going on. Next up, RuneFox has dug up DOS games backslash sports backslash SSBB. Well, with a BB, it's either going to be baseball or basketball. And that doesn't help us. Um... Got an EGA VGA BGI, so we know that it's going to be um, Borland made. Not a very big executable. Um, we do have a text file. It's a fairly big text file. 
Um, BB.text. What we got here? Superstar Baseball. Okay, so not basketball. Written by James Rossi. This game is based on a Sports Illustrated board game issued in 1974. All the data used is accurate up till then. A Sports Illustrated board game? That sounds a little weird. Because <laughs> Sports Illustrated was a magazine. Why would they have a board game? I don't know. Um, got installation. All scoring and base numbers are base runners are kept track of by you, just as if you were scoring a real baseball ball game. Wait, what? <laughs> Let me read that again. All scoring and and okay, all scoring and and base runners are kept track of by you, just as if you were scoring a real baseball game. So you will need a score sheet provided in an ASCII file called bb.form that can be printed out. Wait, so you're not even doing it in the program? Okay, and we apparently have the ability to roll dice by hitting the three at the main menu, and the dice apparently are two separate ones that have different values on them to give you a number between 10 and 39, apparently. Hmm. So yeah, there seems to be a lot of, um, a lot of content to this game, Except it doesn't score on its own. The scoring has to be tracked by the players themselves. So it's more so just a simulation of the basic aspects of the game. Without itself becoming a game? I don't know. Although apparently this guy's saying that this is his first attempt at programming, so please be lenient in your comments. Well, normally I wouldn't be, but he also says that this program is free of, free of charge and may be distributed freely. So because he's not charging money for this, then yeah, I won't be too stringent. Okay, so BB, Superstar Baseball. So we can choose players, batting order, start game. Um, would you like to use the DH, designated hitter? Uh, no. So we can like choose pitchers. And we got a whole bunch of pitchers we can choose from. I'm going to guess that they probably have a whole bunch of stats internally, but... Um, so we're choosing pitchers for different teams. We well, apparently choose catchers and first baseman and everything as well. Does it, Will it automatically have stuff randomly set up, or do I have to actually... Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. So we got some charts here. Uh, legends? Holy jeez. This is supposed to be a board game? <laughs> There's a lot of, um... A lot of things going on here. I almost feel like this... I almost feel like the attempt to make this a board game actually remo removes from the purpose of... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the, um... Okay, I, I mean, apparently I've got a batter chosen, but I don't have a pitcher chosen. Uh, how do I choose the pitcher then? I guess maybe I was supposed to like choose everybody first, so let's go do that. I'm gonna use a designated pitcher. Okay, so we'll choose our pitchers. I go one and two. We choose our catchers. Once again, go one and two. Choose first baseman. One and two. Choose second baseman. One and two. Okay, so now if I go to start game, okay, we see a batter chosen, we see a pitcher chosen, so I'm guessing what I want to do next is, oh, roll. So, that gave me, combined with the batter's capabilities, um, oh, I see what's going on here. Okay, so the dice at the top, the way they're rolled is supposed to represent, is supposed to give you a value between 10 and 39. Now, I don't have the proper numbers in front of me to know that what that ter translates to, but you can see from the batter and the pitcher lists there that it's actually telling us what each of those results should be. And then apparently we're also supposed to take the, um, defensive ratings into account too, but let's just say for sake of example that our batter was, based on the roll that we got, hit, got um, an 18. 18 says G plus on it. So if we go to the legend here, 
we see that G plus means ground out all runners advance one base. So that would mean that the person who just batted is out, but everybody else that was on base got to advance by one more base. But we also have to consider that the pitcher has to roll two. So if the pitcher rolled, and let's say the pitcher rolled an 18, then it would go to the batter, because 18 doesn't amount to anything. But if the pitcher rolled, say, a 29, that's a BB, which means walk. So that would mean that the pitcher walked the batter. <laughs> So yeah, this, they call it a board game, but this is kind of more like um, just a stat tracking game. So you got rolls based on the pitcher and the batter that are, up, that are up, which gives you your defensive ratings, determines what different values that you roll mean. And then based on that, you determine you have the pitcher roll, the pitcher makes their roll, and if there's anything special about the pitch, then you, just, then you do the special thing. Uh, you do the batter. And if there's anything special about the batter's pitch, or the batter's batting, and then you do that stuff. And then you just progress from there. So yeah, it's kind of, a, kind of an interesting way of doing it. The only thing is, is that this game is only simulating that calculation aspect. So you still have to know the rules to the actual board game, and you still have to know how to play that game. But this gets rid of all the tedious work of figuring out what equates to what, so that all you have to do do is hit your roll key to roll your dice, and then pick your appropriate values from there. Although I think it would be nice if the program did go one step further and actually highlighted what the appropriate values were. But then I guess we're getting then I guess that's kind of um Pulling the point away, pulling the point away from where the program was trying to go with this, and just making it sort of an assisting program as opposed to trying to do all the work for the players. So it's only doing the tedious stuff. So I guess to that end, if this particular Sports Illustrated game that came out <laughs> way back in the '70s is something that people were still playing by this point or wanted to play then you've got a program here that simplifies the whole aspect of doing that so that it's easier to play it. So I guess to that end, there's nothing really wrong with it, especially given the fact that this was freeware. And our last dig for today comes from Troy Bowman. Win games backslash arcade backslash SPTVL1. I don't have a clue. <laughs> I really don't have a clue on this one. Uh, spit B L L one, like some kind of Spitfire game. Spitfire being a kind of plane. Got file ID dot this. Space Traveler. I was no close to that. <laughs> Fairly simple game to play. You're a traveler traveling through the galaxy at high speeds. Your ship is designed to collect stars for its fuel, because that makes sense. The object of this game is to collect all of the stars before enter either crashing into one or into another ship or running out of fuel. Or running on the sentence. Um, what's the read me say? Uh, apparently this you're only supposed to play it for two weeks. Um, what's the help file say? Uh, we got licensing and registration. So apparently the game cost seven dollars. So that's actually that's actually pretty reasonable for a Windows 3.1 game. And apparently it was made by uh, Jeffrey Markin. On the how to play screen here, this actually looks kind of familiar, so I think I might have actually played this before. But, anyways, Space Traveler is a fairly simple game to play, traveling through the, Okay, we already read that. Um, you start playing by selecting new game from the new game menu. Before starting, you may wish to select the number of stars in the starting level. Options are located in the skill menu, default settings for beginner, which is 30 stars in the first starting level. So controlling your ship. Use the arrow keys to control the ship. Right and left arrow keys. Move the ship right and left. Ship moves as long as you hold down the down key. Okay. The up and down arrow keys can vary your speed slightly. Use the down arrow key to get a boost in speed and use the up arrow key to slow down. Okay, and apparently it's only a temporary speed change as well. So yeah, looking at this thing here, you need to collect the stars in the very little sort of slot. So the stars have a special slot that they have to go into. Well, let's see what we got here. Oh, it's got this neat little um, interface thing going. So, Space Traveler 1.0. Game of shareware. You may play free for two weeks. 
And yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, no maximize button. No resizable border. And it does minimize properly. So props for getting that part right. <laughs> um, skill level. Uh, I'm just new. Are you ready? Look out for other spaceships. Okie dokie. So we need to collect the stars for fuel. Oh, so far it's not... whoops. Really? One hit deaths? Uh... okay. So you hit, get hit once and you die. Can't say I'm a fan of that logic for a game where you're literally collecting pixels and you have to be pixel accurate. I don't think that's gonna fly very well. <laughs> Not to mention you don't have pixel accuracy over your own movement. So that kind of makes it a little difficult to line up with some of these stars. Although we seem to be doing okay so far. Yeah, that's the other thing too, is that once your sprite, once the star enters your sprite area, it kind of disappears. But what I mean is, is that if a star enters, because you see how you sort of have that sort of protrusion that you're collecting the stars into, right? Well, one of the problems here is that if the star goes into the area, yeah, if the star goes into the area in front of your ship that's beside that that protrusion, the star disappears because your ship is being drawn over top of the stars, whereas the stars really should be being drawn over top of the ship so that you don't lose track of them. So you don't actually know if you've hit the star or not or collected the star or not unless you're watching the bottom fuel gauge, but that's actually tough to that's actually tough to keep watch on. So yeah, you're basically balancing two different collision collision spaces here. One of which is not very perfect, is not very done very well. <laughs> and yeah, that's actually something that yeah, it's so that is so tricky. It doesn't look hard, but it is very difficult to get this to get these stars in. And then on top of that, you have to worry about how much fuel you're going through. One of the things that you have to consider when you're um, when you're doing any kind of any kind of 2D shooter is the shots that are being that are coming towards you. It does nobody any favors if the shots are hitting sprite limits, and as a result, you're not seeing all of the shots. Or in another case, if the shots are going behind things that they shouldn't be going behind because it makes it impossible to dodge them properly. Also, here's another potential problem: is the fact that. We're burning through a lot of fuel, and yet we have to collect every star. Yeah, that's actually very difficult, because if I'm not hitting the stars, then I'm actually going to... What the heck? A uh, game? Okay, that was weird. <laughs> I was pretty sure that I hit the hit the to start again, but yeah, for some reason it's not starting the game starting the game immediately anymore. Okay, can I beat level one? Or actually, it says I'm on level two. What? <laughs> Shouldn't I be on level one? Oh no, wait! Now I'm suddenly up to level three. I don't get it. Like, is the level increasing as I collect stars? Okay, there's only one star left, and I've got a good amount of fuel. Let's see what happens if we can get catch this. I hit it. Oh, that's what's happening. The um, the arrow keys that I'm holding to do the movement is also affecting what option I'm selecting here. So yeah, that was Space Traveler. Um, this is an unnecessarily difficult game. The fuel goes down way too fast. It's very difficult to dodge things properly, especially given the fact that you're basically dodging pixels. Like I don't even know how well it's going to show up on the video stream here. But yeah, it's it's interesting and it's it's well done for what it is. 
but it's it needs some better design behind it to really get it to some point where it's actually going to be any fun because for me i'm already don't want to play any more of it